Yo, what's going on YouTube? All right, so I should have uh, started recording before I did my first base coat on here, uh, but uh, what I'm doing basically is camouflaging my uh, Maverick Model 88 uh, made by Mossberg 500, or excuse me, made by Mossberg. And um, I was gonna do the full shotgun, uh, chambered in 12 gauge, but instead of doing the full, since I tend to sell, trade uh, a lot of my firearms, I decided just to do the foreign and the butt stock. Uh, so what I did first of all was basically prepped it with some Windex, uh, wiped it down really good, got all the oils off of it, and then I went over with, uh, this is the first coat actually, this other side's still black. Um, and what I got going on here is just basically some of the camel paint, and uh, most important is going to be your matte finish. and. What that does is basically protect your coats, uh, protects your camouflage um, paint job or whatever paint job it is you're doing. And so it keeps it from chipping, peeling, scuffing, you know, to a minimum. Uh, but it does help it a lot better than, you know, just basically painting it and then going out to the field with the, your rifle, your shotgun, your handgun or whatever it is you're painting. Uh, the type of black I like to use is, which would be probably my last coat, is going to be um, this here and this is for uh, vehicles uh, it, it basically carries uh, a stronger coat and it holds up well with heat and stuff like that I live in the Arizona desert so it gets really hot and that being my last coat for my camel uh, job uh, it, it basically just gives it a more stronger coat finish or whatnot so I think we could probably go ahead and flip this guy over here flip it over and uh, we'll hit the other sides. Um, most important is you want to make sure that your hands uh, don't continuously keep touching the areas on the top here. You can wear gloves. I prefer um, non-powdered uh, gloves. Uh, but me personally, I just go ahead and use my hands. I do have gloves I can use, but just to show you, if you don't have gloves, you know I'm going with the basics of what you can do. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and flip it. Looks like it's pretty dry. and. That's a big key, you wanna make sure it's dry because once you flip it, if you're using like cardboard as I am, uh, what could tend to happen is it'll stick. So let's go ahead and flip this guy over. Now you uh, really don't need a spray in the inside here and as you can see, I taped off uh, the metal on, on the, the foreign because uh, I really don't prefer to have that painted. So, and uh, I'll just go ahead and hit it with the first coat and just show you guys how light I do it. And you, and you know, basically the distance. I've done a handgun before on here. You guys can go back and check out my videos. Um, so what I do basically, I have a little bit of a wind picking up, but it's not too bad. And so you wanna make sure that wind's not gonna drift into you while you're painting, uh, cause then that could cause some issues. So just make sure your can's real rattled up. And I just keep a good distance. I don't try to, you know, spray it too much in one spot, basically just, a quick back and forth swipe and another big key is to make sure that you push down very well on uh, the spray the spray tip because uh, if you half spray if you half push down then what can happen is it can clog or you can get drips and stuff like that which you want to avoid the most so you guys can see it's just quick just quick swipes on it and your first coat, you know, it, it doesn't have to be gloved on there because you got to remember you're going to go over with different types of colors. So this is basically uh, what you would consider like a primer kind of like. Uh, and then on top of that, when you go over with your leaves, which I'll show you here in a bit, um, you'll have these colors popping through. So now I like to hit it at least maybe, you know, one or two solid types times on uh, the first coat just to make sure that it's on there very well but as I stated you really don't have to make it too thick or whatnot uh, now I'll show you the types of leaves some I have set up and the types of leaves that I'll use branches stuff like that I mean you can use just about anything you can even sponge it uh, there's a lot of videos on YouTube of people using sponges so what I do is just run around the yard and uh, just start finding weeds and stuff like that pulling up some weeds uh, these are some uh, branches off a tree that I have in my front yard. And, you know, just, just a number of things like that. Uh, I have actually seen a really cool video on YouTube of someone actually using rocks 
but what they did was they washed the rocks off really well, uh, kind of like these yard rocks as you'll see here. Uh, I'm not going to use those or demonstrate with them. Uh, it's just because you got to basically get all the sand off them, otherwise it could cause some issues with the paint job. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and let this dry, and then we'll come right back at it, and uh, we'll go over with another. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit my second coat with this color, but I'll just keep that off video just to cut it short. And then uh, once we go in with the second color, I'll bring you guys back in, so stay tuned. All right, so I got two coats dried up now, and uh, what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, is uh, go ahead and start off with, it's like a green, I don't know what they would call it, consider this color, but it's like a greenish type. And uh, my, my goal right now is to go from lightest to darkest, but you can always bring it back light uh, with you know the lighter coat if you don't like how it's coming out. Um, I decided to go ahead and grab some gloves, uh, just basically one glove. I don't like using glove on my spray, on the hand that I'm gonna be spraying with because that glove, the tip can hang as you can see here. And if that hits that tip of the nozzle, what can happen is it could cause you know a huge mess. Um, so first of all, what I'm gonna do, there goes my phone, never fails, um, is go ahead and get the branch. And I'm gonna lay the branch at an angle uh, and on this coat, you don't want to go too solid, too heavy, or whatnot. I mean, you can to your satisfactory of however you think you're going to like it, but I personally don't. Um, I will be fighting with the wind, as you can tell. Uh, it's starting to kick up a little bit, but I'm not going to let that screw me off. So what I'm going to do, make sure you move your other part out of the way so you don't accidentally spray it. Uh, I usually keep an extra cardboard laying around and just place that off to the side on the cardboard or you know basically in a clean area and so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and lay my branches down here and you're just going to drift over it now you can go at an angle which i probably am going to do uh, just because it'll probably look a little better and what you want to do you can hold it but if you hold it do not move it so you want to make sure you're steady So, and then you just drag it all the way around, like so. Okay, this is actually the brown. I mistaken it for the green, but it don't really matter. So you can see there's a bit of a camouflage look to it. And what I'll do is uh, grab my bigger branch. Actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna grab the smaller branch and uh, just hit some of these tip areas here like so now mind you uh, your first coat's not going to come out like oh damn that's popping off it looks great um, it does take a matter of working with in order to get it to uh, your satisfactory uh, what I like to do is go around the edges now and uh, just hit it that way you're uh, Camel just basically blends all the way around. And that's another thing too, you don't want to spray too much on the leaf because then when you go to lay the leaf on your item that you're painting what can happen is it can drag and leave you know some off colored marks so there's the first coat on that what I'll do is grab that and place it over to the side here uh, you can interchange out your cardboard if it starts to get sticky as you can tell it seemed like it was sticking on the bottom there so what I'll do now is just grab this lay it down here grab my first branch that I used the first time I mean it really doesn't matter but uh, I want to kind of keep you know, all of my patterns like almost the same as that. So you can see there's some of the pattern there. And I'm gonna come around the edge. And like so. So you can see that came out with a nice little pop there. So with that being done, I'm gonna let that sit and dry. And I'll give you guys a top visual of how it looks without trying to drop my camera on it. 
And I like these branches a lot. It kind of gives it that skull looking pop. So pretty awesome. I'll let that settle and then uh, we'll flip it and I'll do the other side. Uh, I'll do the other side off camera so I don't continuously waste time on this video. So I'll flip this myself, do it, and then uh, once that dries on the other side, I'll come back and we'll hit it with another color. Stay tuned. Alright, so I got the coat on both sides complete and I allowed it to dry. Um, so what I'm going to do is come back in with the new branch. As you can see, this one has a lot of detail to it. And I'm just going to lay it on there. Um, and now I'm going to come in, I believe this is the brown, and I'm just going to hit it. And I'll show you guys how it comes out. Now with this, you want to kind of get a good pattern in, because this is basically like your second coat of camo. So you want to kind of, basically what you want to do is get it in where it's going to overlap on all the colors. So I'm going to lay it like so, and then just hit it. like that pull it off now you're gonna notice it's gonna start to get a little bit dark what I'll do is come back into it with uh, the lighter color so you can see it's got more of a green gray and a tan to it now and uh, I'm gonna hit the edges on it like so here so it just kind of gives it more as you can see an in-depth of uh, colors like crossed through it so I'm gonna hit the bottom now like that and we'll just bring our uh, forehand over and I'm gonna just hit like where all the leaves are basically on it Now what's really cool about doing this yourself is a lot of people out hunting or on the field, they're going to have, you know, just a standard camouflage, store-bought, uh, foreign and stuff like that. Uh, well, doing it yourself, you got your own certain type of blend. So let me bring the camera in and show you guys what we got. So you can see. Now it'll come out a lot better once you start going in and hitting it with blacks and a little bit of lights. Um, and on a side note, as I stated, make sure you don't drench your leaves too much or your branches. Uh, I had that issue on the other side. Actually, there's one here where the leaf was really soaked and it just kind of, you know, scratched a little or stuck, I guess you would consider it as. So stay tuned. I'm going to flip it over, uh, hit the other side, and then we'll go in with the black, and then we'll start ta uh, tampering around, basically messing around with lighter colors, uh, darker colors, and just give it a mixed blend. So stay All tuned. Right, now both sides are really dry, and uh, what I decided to do is bring these guys in here, and I'm going to go with the tan and lighten it up a little bit, and then I'll come in with the black and start fading it in. So with this, what I'm going to do is just basically stencil it kind of like so you can see and what that does is line it up a little bit and it gives it some strips to it so, or some stripes kind of like not too shabby um, and then what I'm gonna do right on top of that is come in with the black like that and now you can see start to see a, a blend to it Edges here. Like so. Now I'll come up on the sides. And I'll 
I'll bring you guys in so you guys can get a quick look at it. And then I'll be hitting this with the leaves again. Um, as I said, once you get to this uh, stage here is when you want to basically uh, just start tampering around with it until you get it to your satisfactory. So you can see there. Really neat. So stay tuned. I'll flip it over. I'll do the other side. And then I'll bring you guys back in. All right, so I got both sides done now. And um, mainly now what you can do is you can start to tamper around with it, uh, change up your camo, uh, basically add on to uh, you know the whole works. Uh, so now is when I just basically come in with you know like the blacks, the light colors, the greens, and then I just start to add in small details, uh, not too much. Uh, because I'm already liking how it looks now, but uh, now is when I just add, you know, just some small details with the leaves and stuff like that. So <clears throat> what I'll do is lay down, you know, and just, just hit it with some small detail and stuff like that. That's looking really tough. I actually starting to really like how it looks. Then I'll come in. Now's when I really don't allow it to settle to dry too much. Uh, this is I'm doing small touch ups, but you do want to be careful with your leaves, uh, not to drag them, you know, across the area. So let's like say this is just where you're getting uh, small touch ups in. So you just lay something down like that and just hit it. Do you keep the lids on though? Because uh, it does kind of help identify the colors. You don't really get the colors on the can so uh, it does help uh, i'm gonna come in with the tans and i'm gonna start hitting the darker areas uh you know what i'm gonna actually use is this here just because it's really solid and i'm gonna try to give it a striped look this can starting to uh spray ugly as you can see there i got some splats uh, i'm gonna wipe the tip off And don't stress it if you do start to get strips like that or splats, uh, just come back in with the black and, you know, hit over those areas. Like so. So uh, I'll tap around with it a little bit more. And then when it's all uh, complete and done, I'll bring you guys back in and give you guys a visual. Uh, for right now, I'll give you a top visual, but this isn't the finished product. I always like to go back over it and, you know, just basically work with it. So, not too shabby. Stay tuned. Uh, once I get it all done and complete to my satisfactory, I'll bring you guys back in. And as I stated, all I'm going to do is basically lay some leaves down, touch, do some touch-ups, stuff like that. So, stay right, tuned. So, I hit it to my satisfactory and let me bring you guys in and just give you guys a visual. Everybody's got their own opinion. Uh, I personally like it. A lot of people are going to say it looks ugly. A lot of people are going to say it looks cool. Um, but honestly, I think it looks pretty tough. And, you know, so, uh, do it yourself. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's going to have its own different type of appearance compared to everybody else's camel. So, so now what I'll do is allow this to dry properly. Uh, probably for a nice hour. And then what I'll do is come in with a clear coat and start hitting with a clear coat. Then I'll put this bad boy together and I'll show you guys how it all came out. So stay tuned. Uh, any questions, feel free to leave me a private message. I don't check my comments too often and I don't have my comments linked to my email. Uh, but you can drop me a private message and I'll be able to message you back. You can leave a comment. I'll, I'll check on my comments uh, periodically. Uh, but just, you know, between work, hunting, fishing and everything else and family time, 
uh, just really busy so when I do get on YouTube I do check comments and I do try to answer as much questions as possible so let me know what you guys think stay tuned I'll have this bad boy uh, clear coated put it together and um, I'll show you guys, all right, guys so I got it all put back together and I think this bad boy looks tougher than hell so uh, I'll give you guys a close look at it I know from far away if you were you know you, you really can't get a good visual from far away but let me get it show up close here show you that beautiful camel job and this is do-it-yourself so you know it kind of benefits you don't have to go and drop a nice excessive amount of money to get a nice camel job and on top of that as I said it's unique you did it yourself so I think it looks pretty tough as I stated this isn't my first project um, and I'll show you guys a couple projects that I've done before kind of with the matching base so I did my wife and my daughter's Phoenix Arms HP 22 and you guys can see basically same type of camel job and I've actually uh, had this done I wanted to say maybe about two years now it's been probably close to two years and uh, it's held up well and I've uh, shot the hell out of this thing and so yeah I actually have some nice grips for this uh, just the wife isn't liking them uh, one of our buddies scat pack 68 uh, made us some grips but the wife's saying they're a little too bulky for her so we just went on ahead and put these back on so much love scat pack just thought I'll throw that out there just in case you didn't see your grips on it man so anyways there's the camel job there and as I stated I think it came out really tough and it's unique so I mean you know not everybody's gonna have this you know you, you basically do it yourself so and everybody's gonna have their own opinion as I stated I've seen a lot of people uh, on YouTube making their own camel jobs and people who criticizing them for it but you know what if it fits your needs you like it then do it uh, I wanted to add I have a bunch of uh, coats on here of clear coat the protective clear coat and I have probably I think wanting to say maybe three or four coats on there uh, you can always go back over it without having to take the gun apart just you know mask off some stuff if you think you need more clear coat on there to uh, keep it protected so yeah and I was gonna show you guys another project that I did um, me and my son do, do a lot of airsofting in the backyard and having fun uh, this is another camel job I did uh, same same kind of ordeal with the leaves and stuff as you guys can see I have a few videos on my YouTube channel of me doing other projects like this and actually doing the projects of these so very nice uh, these firearms are not loaded. I want to go ahead and clear that up with you guys because I know a lot of people are going to uh, judge, you know, by me not doing a online safety check. But um, these firearms are not loaded. Just I'll let you guys know that. So let me know what you guys think. I think this bad boy is ready for dove season. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, hit me up. Let me know if you guys need anything. Uh, you guys can leave comments below, and I'll I'll periodically check them and answer them. Um, a lot of issues I'm having right now uh, with even a couple of my subscribers is they're commenting and I'm not able to reply there's not a reply button uh, so if you see me thumbing up your uh, messages but not re uh, replying to them uh, it's because I'm having that issue I don't know how to fix that so I know there's a couple of you I private messaged and said hey I can't um, reply to your comments and I apologize but I do see them so there you have it do it yourself you guys I think this bad boy looks pretty tough. I think my buddies are gonna be like, damn dude, what'd you do? So uh stay tuned. As I stated, dove season is already has it's dove season's already partaked, but uh I'm just waiting. Uh right now it's real crowded out in the spots that I like to go to. So I'm gonna go hit the native land here pretty soon. It's only a think $32, $35 tech uh dove stamp. I already have my Arizona dove stamp. Um, I'll show you guys. I just guess I'll just show you guys. Let's see if I can get my wallet out here. Show you guys what our stamps look like. A lot of you guys are probably uh, curious, and maybe most of you guys ain't, but I'll just show you guys really quick. So, here in Arizona, we have a lot of native land, and uh, their fishing stamps and stuff like that is different than Arizona so you got to pay Arizona and if you decide to go on native you got to pay a whole different price for native um, 
for instance, I'll just glance through. I don't want to give you guys too much of my information. Uh, but here's the native, my native fishing uh, license. And then here's my hunting license. This is what I do, uh, all my Arizona fishing and hunting areas. There's my uh, dove stamp for Arizona. So I'll be getting another card like this with the dove for the native land. It's pretty crazy that we have to, you know, do that. But uh, it is what it is. You know, you got to respect it. So... Much love and respect, you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope this tutorial helped. Uh, if it didn't and you have questions, feel free to leave them. I'm up and out. Peace out, my friends, and God bless.